All right, we have just 76 days to go until the midterm election. We're going to cover everything today from the new law that doesn't do what it says it does, uh, the new Abraham Lincoln, immigration, Mar-a-Lago, and an emotional farewell to CNN's Brian Salter. Stelter. Stelter. <laughs> you act like I watch CNN. I don't know. What is it? Stelter? Stelter. Stelter. Okay. All of that plus the news of the day on this episode of Dale Carter's America. From the heart of flyover country, he's not on the far right, and he's certainly not on the far left. Like you, he's somewhere in the middle. This is Dale Carter's America. All right. First of all, a uh, shout out to Mark Zarda. He's like our number one fan on Dale Carter's America. And to get the full experience now, you know, you can still get it wherever you get podcasts. You can get the audio version of it. But uh, go over to YouTube. Rumble, is that the other thing, Kurt? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Rumble uh, and YouTube are the two main ones. Okay. So you can see the full experience. And Zarda gave me crap because we, we just did the, the, the big version in the TV studio last week. And we have white walls. You still have a white wall. I know. Yeah. That, yeah. I, it's right here. So. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. I'll have to find something to put But up we've there. upgraded. Uh, we got an American flag out of the chief engineer's office. He also helped us out with some things to make it sound better. And then we've got our, our meme wall. Is that what that thing is behind me? That's correct. Yeah, okay, the meme wall. Okay, cool. So we've, we've added a little color. Mark Zarda, you get a... Um, uh, a nice uh, kudo from us on that. Gold star for Mark Zarda. Yeah, uh, We have a lot of news to cover. There's a lot. I mean, we try and get this done in an hour. It may be a challenge today. Uh, we'll go first to this, uh, the breaking news that the Fouch, Anthony Fauci, is hanging up the stethoscope. That's right. That's right. Is this where you put the clip in or do I have to ask for it? Oh, no. I'm just I'm pulling up the, the article here. All right. See, you know, we're still learning how all this stuff works here. My question is, the guy is the highest paid employee of the federal government. Did you know that? Yep. Highest paid employee. So why quit? Why not do what the, the big term now is quietly quit? Have you heard that? I've heard yeah. Quietly quit. That's the new thing. It's like you just do enough to get by. He could just come in, put his feet up on the desk, read the New York Times, and, you know, just show up and get a paycheck. Why does he have to quit? Well, we've talked about this before. In my opinion, you know, he's he's going to do like the the Barack Obama, you know. And I mean, he is he is getting old. I, he's older than I he's thought. He's 80. Yeah, he's older than I thought he was, but um I'm sure that him having the position of authority and being the the elite member of the ruling class that he is, he's going to be going around on the speaking tours. He's going to be, you know, getting booked at colleges. He's going to be getting booked for consulting, you know, for various uh you know, medical professionals and, and things like that. So I, I think if anything, he'll probably make more money now than, than he did working for the government. Well, he's 80. I mean, you know, not like he's going to retire, go to Florida and get Social Security or whatever. Right, he's, right. You know, he's got people to feed. Um, and we have a clip on Dr. Fauci? Yeah, we have a couple. So um, I wanted to first play my favorite Fauci moment. I don't know if you remember this or not, but this was the famous, uh, the famous first pitch here from Dr. Fauci. Oh, my. <laughs> it went hard left, but he was wearing a mask. Dr. That's good. Anthony Fauci. Dr. Anthony Fauci. All right. Let's watch that <laughs> one more time just because. <laughs> I mean, come on. Whoop. Yeah. That's not a strike in no. anybody's strike zone. No, that's not a strike, but, you know. And then I don't know if you saw this uh, recently. You know, he has this thing where he likes to talk about how he's the science. You know, he he represents truth and mm. science and everything else. And there was a really good one that came out last week that is just, I mean, this guy's ego is just off the charts. Watch this. It's called the Fauci effect, which is sort of like, you know, as trust me, I'm, I, I don't get excited about that. <laughs> I mean, it's nice, but I mean, it's, it's, I, I, people go to medical school now, people are interested in science, not because of me, because people, most people don't know oh, me, not who I am. My friends know me, my wife knows me, but people don't know me. It's what I symbolize. Everybody and knows what you. what I symbolize in a, in an era of the what normalization of untruths and lies and and all the things you're seeing going on in society from January 6th to everything else that goes on, people the craving for consistency, for integrity, for truth, and for people caring about people. It's called the Fauci effect. That's what he symbolizes. Oh my God, I may throw up. Yeah. At this and point. you notice too, 
everyone in the crowd wearing a mask, him and the other speaker not wearing a mask. Yeah. You know, the truth squad was something that uh, the Biden administration ran out and quickly pulled back. We needed the truth squad. We'll get to this later. Uh, the inflation reduction bill. We needed the truth squad for that because it doesn't do it at yeah. all. Uh, but we'll get to that coming up. There's a lot on the plate here as far as news. Uh, we next go to Minneapolis, uh, the school district there agreeing with the teachers union uh, that when they need to let teachers go, they will let white teachers go first. Regardless of their tenure, that starts next year. The goal there, Kurt, is to make sure that underrepresented races are still in the classroom. So, if, And you were a teacher. Yep. So if, if you had tenure and they let you go to keep a black teacher, how would that make you feel? Not great. <laughs> but, I mean, it's not surprising, you know, but uh, this, this is kind of spells everything out here. If you're watching the video, you can pause it and read through all this. But the, the way that they did it was they didn't say – we're going to fire white teachers first. They said that we're going to prioritize keeping, you know, marginalized communities, people of color, blah, blah, blah. And this whole, this whole people of color, um, you know, moniker, whatever you want to call it, it's basically just become not white people. Like everyone is just lumped in with people of color now, except white people. So it's basically just, you know, a screw white people moniker. So when they say we're going to prioritize hold, you know, keeping, um, people of color, you know, and not firing them, that means we're going to fire the white teachers first. So that's exactly what, what they're are do. white people anyway. I mean, let's think about that. You know, you've got uh, people who are white supremacists and all that. If you know any of them, you might ask them, have you done the DNA test? Do you know where you come from? I don't know. I because mean, I don't know that there are any pure white people out there anymore that can say, that can claim any kind of racial purity. So I, I think if they yeah. were going to fire me, I would bring them my Ancestry.com DNA thing that I did. Well, you could say that about any race, really, though. I mean, you could say the same thing about blacks. I mean, uh, where, I mean, Africa is a big continent, right? Like, what, yeah. where, where exactly are you from? So, I mean, yeah, white people is, it's the term white is, is kind of all encompassing in terms of, uh, you know, European ancestry or whatever, but, um, you can get more specific, you know, Irish, German, mm. uh, British, whatever. But, um, well, you know, that's what Martin Luther King Jr. said in his famous speech. He said, fire the white people first. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's what he said, right, Kurt? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he said. Well, let's And just for reference here, I have the, I have the clip here. <laughs> I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Except for white people. Fire the white people first. I'm pretty sure if you played the speech backward, that's what it would say. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's a I hidden message. That one day Sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood? I have a dream. Yeah, it was a great dream. It was a great speech. Day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of A lot of, of people there, too. It's... Always interesting to see those videos of how how many people there were. I have a dream. Are you going to play the whole speech? <laughs> no, no, no. We can. Stop I just it. wanted to make a point that yeah. you know that's not that that turns Dr. Martin Luther King on its head. There, that's not what he was all about. He was about uh, the content of character far exceeding the color of skin. But we're clearly not there. In fact, we're going the other way. Yeah, we're not making progress. We're regressing on this. Well, it's about it's about um, payback. You know, it's about retribution. It's a, it's about vengeance to these people. They they have this perceived um status of of oppression and their way of you know getting back at whitey or whatever is it, it's not making things more equal it's not um judging people by the content of their character mm -hmm. it's not meritocracy it's you know let's do racism in reverse let's let's oppress you know let's let's show them how it feels you know what i mean despite yeah. the fact that no white person alive certainly neither of us or anyone that i know 
had anything to do with anything that happened throughout history, you know, and everything else. And then you you have this, you know, my, my wife uh, loves Wyoming. She loves the Jackson Hole area. And, and a lot of the folks out in Wyoming are just terrified that people from California are going to move in and they're moving in in droves. And then they vote and they make it more California than it is Wyoming. Well, that's happening in North Dakota, although it was an immigrant, an Ethiopian immigrant named Niamel Day. Uh, she's on the Fargo school board. Now, she puts out this great story on Facebook about the harrowing escape that she made from Ethiopia. And we talk about this all the time, about the oppression that people face when they're in other countries. Mm -hmm. Okay? So she gets on the school board in Fargo, and like a lot of meetings, you know, Blue Spring City Council, which I was part of for almost a decade, we start every meeting with a Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. So she tried to get them to drop the Pledge of Allegiance because mm -hmm. she didn't think they needed it. Uh, she lost eight to one. Yeah. That's what she wanted to do, though. And it, there's a word out there, Kurt, called gratitude. When you come to this country, it's like you've come to a great place, right? So you want to come here and you want to change it into what you escaped from? You you want oppression? <clears throat> yeah. I, I mean, it's the same thing with like Ilhan Omar in Congress and, and these other people. And, you know, Trump got in a lot of heat. Uh, for basically saying like, if you don't like it here, then go back to Somalia, <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, you know, he, he has his way of saying things that can be abrasive or whatever. But I mean, I think he was totally right in saying that. I mean, you're, you're coming here for a reason because this is the land of opportunity and, and we have welcomed you into our country and, and now you're just shitting on it, you know, and, and, uh, maybe that says something about our immigration system too, that, that, um, you know, we're not doing our due diligence to make sure that the people who are coming in here are going to assimilate and and respect our values and respect our nation. You know, that mm -hmm. that's very important. By the way, I just wanted to note here that I am wearing my uh, State Farm Insurance shirt that Bob Watson got me, adding a little bit of color because I know Mark Zarda was a little worried that it was too white behind <laughs> me there. So I'm wearing a red shirt for State Farm. You know, surprisingly great rates at State Farm. And there's somebody else who wears red who also supports State Farm. That's right. That's I, right. I think he has a white number 15 <laughs> on the shirt as well. Uh, so Bob Watson is, is our guy there at State Farm. And if you're looking for insurance he's the guy to call blue springs local state farm agent for five decades at seventh and main in uh, downtown blue springs his number is 816-229-7878 816-229-7878 auto home life commercial insurance roofs you know if we get another big hailstorm, you know he he bought me a roof from my house at casa del carter once you know because of a big hailstorm. so when the shit hits the fan you know bob watson is going to be there uh, to help you and i don't know if you can use that bob as your new slogan when the shit hits the fan <laughs> it's bob watson who can uh, be there to fix it for you uh, but we want to thank him for being involved in the uh, podcast current moratorium on student loans expires on august 31st i really Really have a problem with this. Am I alone? You know, I went to college. I took out some student loans. And I mean, you know, don't fall over, Kurt, but I paid them back. Yeah. Yeah. I have student loans too, um, from undergrad and, and grad school. And, uh, it's just, Nobody, nobody can be held responsible financially anymore, well, so I guess we're not going to... There's a this. place you could get me. I mean, I am bribable. Everybody has a price, right? Mm -hmm. My student loans are long gone. Mm -hmm. So um, if they want to do mortgages, I'm right there. <laughs> right. Okay? So if they're listening on the left, if you can just go on the House floor and say, you know, these mortgages are just terrible. People signed up for them, and, you know, they shouldn't have to pay them back. Or car loans, you know, or uh, payday credit loans. card dates, uh, credit card bills. You know, one of my kids got in trouble with the payday loan people, and I had to pay that off for Oh, him, yeah. Uh, because those those people, you talk about yeah. rates. Yeah, careful um, with those guys, man. Exactly. You. <laughs> so <laughs> I think, you know, that's what we should, re you know, forgive next is the payday loans. Why not? Credit card debt. Yeah. People are in, I think I, I read a figure somewhere that the country, the people in the country are $16 trillion in debt right now. Mm -hmm. Never mind the fact that the government's 30 and a half half trillion dollars in debt, people with their own um, debt load at home are $16 trillion in debt. Yeah. And, you know, college gets more expensive, too. I mean, it's interesting how this works because you have more federal programs 
like FAFSA and everything else that are geared towards helping students pay for college. And then what do the colleges do? They jack up the the tuition costs. So, I mean, back in the day, you know, not to use the cliche, but back in the day, um, maybe before I went to college, but maybe like when you went to college or, or, you know, in that era, you could pay your way through college. You could get a part-time job um, and pay your way through college. It was like a couple grand a year. I know? had a full-time job and, and I paid yeah. my way through college. Yeah, exactly. And, and so that's not really possible anymore because you're, you have a full-time schedule at college and they're jacking the rates up. And it's interesting because people don't make that connection. They're like, oh, why do colleges keep jacking the rates up? You know, we need more student loan forgiveness. Well, yeah, these two things are connected and we're, we're going to get into it later with the, uh, electric vehicle stuff too. But when the government creates an incentive and gives all of these, you know, loans and tax breaks and everything else like that, that's just they, the college is still going to make their money. They're going to see that as an opportunity for basically free money for them. Mm. They're just going to jack up the rates and then they have more money coming in for, you know, whatever pet projects they have. Well, anytime the government gets involved, too, and we're seeing that now, we're living through it now, is inflation. OK, so the government comes in, they wipe out all this student loan debt. It creates inflation because it's putting phony money, funny, phony, <laughs> I can't even say it, <laughs> phony money into the system. Um, so it's it's just another one of those things that when it comes out, it's like this is a bad idea. And this is why in 76 days we have a chance to course correct and, and we need to do that. And speaking of Election Day, um, the NBA has weighed in on Election Day. Um, they aren't going to have any games on Election Day. Now, the first when I first heard this, Kurt, I thought, aren't NBA games at night on a Tuesday night? They're yeah. not during the day. Yeah, well, I guess it depends on the time zone. Um, so, like, 7 p.m. Eastern time it would be, what, 4 p.m. Pacific time? Yeah. So it's, it's possible that... But that they're not playing be. NBA games at 4 o'clock <laughs> local time. That they're playing. Okay, that's that's going to be a math question. Right. Um, but you know, why don't we just go full tilt? I mean, if we really want people to come to the polls, why not make it a federal holiday? I don't think it will make an ounce of difference in terms of voter turnout because there's so much apathy out there. It's a very small minority of people who will get off their ass and go to the poll and vote. But you know, if you want to do it, why not go all the way? And make it a federal holiday. Yeah, and at the end of the day, I mean, my my initial reaction to this was like. And I may have posted this on the Facebook page. Uh, if you only have time on election day to go vote or watch a basketball game and you choose to watch a basketball game, that's on you. That's not anyone else's problem. You chose to spend your time that way. You know, I mean, there's so many. I, I'm fine with making it a federal holiday, but there's already so many uh allowances that are given for people to go vote i mean early here, voting absentee voting yeah and even aside from all that stuff which which in my opinion we should largely be getting rid of but even on election day you know most employers have uh policies that allow you to take off to go vote I even think, our company yeah even our company we have i think we have two <laughs> hours or or three hours that you can take i didn't even know day. that you told me it was in the handbook i've yeah. never even read the handbook <laughs> so hopefully they're not watching this uh <laughs> Yeah, but no, you can, I mean, most, most employers have that. And then, uh, you know, on top of that, you have polls open very early. They open at like 6, 7 a.m. in some places. They stay open till 7 p.m. You have plenty of time. And, that, and it's just a priority thing. Like I said, I mean, if you're having to choose between basketball and voting and you're choosing basketball, then like, what are we even talking about? Mm. Next item, and, and I have to do my, my NPR voice. NPR. National Public Radio. I could have been on NPR, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that's how they talk. This is National Public Radio. Welcome back to Dale yes. Carter's America. Um, <laughs> I don't think they're ever going to air Dale Carter's America <laughs> on NPR. They did a poll, Kurt, and uh, they said, well, what do you think about what's going on on the southern border? And a majority of the people responding to the poll think, think it's an invasion on the southern border. And the NPR people, they just flipped out. They, they couldn't handle that. It's like, you know, so they had to follow up the poll with a story saying how stupid you are for believing that there's an invasion on the southern border. <laughs> yeah, and then they specifically, too, they were uh, getting into the, the whole fentanyl issue. Yeah. Because... They don't think it's a big deal, right? Yeah, and well, a majority of the respondents also said that they believe, they either strongly believe or somewhat believe that uh, fentanyl crossing 
through illegal immigration over the border is a, a major driving force behind the, the drug crisis that we're having here in America. And so then they're running cover for that too. They have a whole segment on that. Misleading claims about immigrants are gaining traction, particularly around fentanyl. Mm. So they're just totally obfuscating from the fact that drugs are coming over the border, you know, illegally. Um, you know, just like Donald Trump said, I mean, that, that's one of the things that they misquote him on all the time is, you know, they, they act like he said, all Mexicans are rapists. No, he never said that. No. Um, he, he pointed out accurately that there's a large problem with criminals coming over the border, drugs coming over the border. And uh, it's just true. You can obfuscate all you want, but it's just true. Well, let me give you the pinnacle of stupidity. The pinnacle of stupidity is that we're using tax dollars to support this voice of the left. It's completely unnecessary. I mean, we already have MSNBC. We've got CNN. We've got the New York Times and the Washington Post. Why are our tax dollars supporting this drivel? And, you know, my message for the Republicans who are going to win the House at least in 76 days, I still hold out hope that they'll win the Senate, even though Mitch McConnell doesn't think that's going to happen. Uh, in 76 days, the House of Representatives holds the purse strings. What can they do? They can stop funding this shit. Yeah. Okay, have some balls when you get in there as the majority and the Republicans don't worry about what the K Street crowd is going to think of you defund this. And I put this first yeah. that we don't need national public radio supported by tax dollars. We don't need the public broadcasting system supported by tax dollars. Go out there in the market place of ideas and, and get your own money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of things that need to be defunded. <laughs> uh, Planned Parenthood public education, NPR, the FBI. <laughs> I mean, the list is long. But, but don't uh, you agree, though, that yeah. the House of Representatives, uh, You everybody says to me, well, what can they do? They'll only have the House. They're probably not going to have the Senate. They've got Joey B. for two more years. The purse strings of the federal government are controlled by the House of Representatives. Stop paying for it. Yeah, or they're supposed to be controlled by the House of Representatives. You well, know? the Constitution, I know it gets in the way of the Democrats, but that's the way the Constitution's written. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it would be one thing if it was like a, a truly neutral news source and they were just reporting the facts. And They're not. Know, but they're not. I mean, it, NPR, they're not only left, they are the loony left. Yeah. I mean, NPR is like, I listen to it sometimes. I used to listen to it a lot more, but I follow them very closely on Facebook and Twitter. I mean, they are more left wing than like CNN. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's ridiculous. So How's yeah. my NPR voice, by the way? Is it pretty good? National Public Radio. Maybe. Kurt Wheeler is with us here on Dale Carter's America because he is a whack job. <laughs> you need to you need to use more leftist catchphrases though. Like uh, on Dale Carter's America, we have all of the microaggressions. And <laughs> 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 All right, let's move on. Mar-a-Lago, uh, the latest on that, the uh, Trump-hating judge. And this is not even a secret. I mean, this judge was out on social media trashing Donald Trump. So the Justice Department judge shops. They find a guy who hates Trump. And I know there's many people who hate Trump. But they find this guy who uh, hates Trump. They approve this uh, raid on his home. And it's so pressing. It's so important for national security, Kurt, that um, – the the attorney general Merrick Garland sits on it for two weeks. Yeah, because it was it was urgent that they get this done for national security reasons. Okay, so um, this judge is now getting threatened by people on the right. Now I want to say this very clearly: I, I'm not for that. Don't, you shouldn't threaten anybody. You shouldn't threaten the FBI. You shouldn't threaten the judge. There's there's no room in this for violence. But where was this with Kavanaugh? Kavanaugh actually had somebody show up at his house with a gun. Right? Yeah. That's an assassination attempt. Um, they followed Amy Coney Barrett's kids to Catholic school. I mean, where was the left on this? They made fun of it. They made fun of it on The View. Yeah. You know, Clarence Thomas, they, you know, they're trying to get him impeached, for God's sake. Um, where is the left on this? So where is the fairness and the balance on this? Yeah, and I mean, not to mention that a former staffer for Bernie Sanders went and shot up a Republican baseball game, a supporter of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, went to a border uh, a uh, border patrol facility and tried to shoot it up and set off bombs. Um, not to mention that you had an entire summer of riots fueled by left-wing narratives. So, yeah. I mean, the, if, you're, if you're looking at who is inciting what, I mean, the record is pretty clear on that. I think. Well, and the news of the day is that the New York... Cli the, New, huh, 
The New York Times claims that Trump had over 300 classified documents. How would they know? Yeah. Somebody leaked that from the Justice Department. Yep. So, again, th- their idea here, Kurt, is to drip, drip, drip bad news about Donald Trump every day. It, it serves a couple of purposes. It gets some ratings at CNN and MSNBC, and God knows they wouldn't have ratings without Donald Trump. Um, and it also might keep him from running for president. Or it has the other effect, and that is it coalesces the Republican Party. Donald Trump does run, and he wins. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we have a couple of clips here because you had mentioned, uh, you know, people freaking out over this and they're they're grilling people on CNN. Why you would go on CNN? I just I don't know. I mean, it's it's just a losing battle. You're you're not reasoning with uh, like competent adults. So don't waste your time. But here's uh, Tim Scott on CNN. Search warrant is facing a surge of threats, particularly online, maybe more. His information on the federal court's website, it was taken down. And look at that. It says access denied as a way to protect him. Should your colleagues, your Republican colleagues, tone down the rhetoric? Well, Dan, I will say that this is unprecedented. It's shocking. It is disturbing from my perspective. What I said earlier, I think I was on another station. I said, I'm asking my friends on the other side, wait, don't rush to judgment. But this is without question a very daring and dangerous move on the Department of Justice aside. I can't imagine them finding a smoking gun in the midst of what they're looking for through the Presidential Records Act. I'm stunned that they did it. You said the folks on the other side should uh, should hold off. It's the folks, some of the folks on your side, including and starting with the former president. He's the one who broke the news with a really incendiary uh, statement. Should they tone it down? Incendiary. Because Unbelievable. I, I, there, there's potential for things to go south quickly. No question. I would say without any hesitation that every single member of our family, the American family, should be very concerned when you feel like there is a weaponization of the Department of Justice against any individual, Amen. much less a but, former president. But what makes you think that's happening? If it- Yeah, and he goes on for a while. You can watch that whole clip. But I mean, I, I think he did a decent job there of, of kind of uh, pushing back. But, you know, Tim Scott has been kind of flip floppy on this. He, he went on one of these major networks and said, you know, we should not rush to judgment. We should wait to see what comes out of the, of the FBI probe before we say that it's bad and, and all this, and which he went back on that and realized that that was a stupid move politically. But, you know, what's incendiary, right? She's yeah. saying, oh, well, what about the people on your side making all these incendiary comments about the FBI? Well, they're, they're pointing out what they're seeing. What's incendiary is the FBI targeting political opponents. That's what's incendiary. You know, I mean, can we not even talk about that? Anytime you criticize the FBI, all of a sudden you're, you're calling for violence. You're being incendiary. It's the same argument they made about Donald Trump on January 6th, where they said, you know, he was up there saying, questioning the election, saying that, you know, we need to fight for our rights to, to fair elections and everything like that, equating that with calling for violence, with saying, you know, go hang Mike Pence or whatever. You know, it's totally ridiculous, and well, it needs to be pushed back. I'm ready for a special master to come in because I'm not going to take the Justice Department and the FBI at their word. I lived through the Russia hoax, as did you, where the FBI basically became a tool of the Democratic National Committee and anybody who doesn't believe that isn't following the facts, isn't looking for the truth. Um, and we said we'd tell the truth on this podcast. So it's time for somebody who does not have a dog in the hunt, a special master, to look at this. I still want to see the affidavit. Why did they? What was the reason for going in? We know that they went in. We saw the uh, warrant. Okay, you saw the list of stuff that they took, the inventory, which isn't specific. It's boxes of this, boxes of that. Um, why did they go in? Yeah. Why did they have to go into a former president's home? Because, again, I'll say this. If a former president's home isn't off limits, you aren't off limits. You're definitely not off limits because you don't have the same uh, you know, legal team. You don't have the infrastructure to defend yourself. You yeah. know, I mean, he's going through and, and he's going – he's taking him to court, you know, and he's going to do everything he can to – to defend himself, but what are you going to do? I mean, as Dale Carter or as Kurt Wheeler or as anyone else to, you know, you're, you're going to defend yourself against the FBI, against the IRS with 87,000 agents, some of which are armed to, you know, come, uh, 87,000 new agents. Yeah. They are doubling the size of the IRS with that 87,000. Yeah. Good luck to them hiring anybody because nobody wants to work. I had one more clip on All that right, too, ahead. um, that I thought was pretty good where, 
Ted Cruz was was saying basically he thinks this is a witch hunt and which is I think kind of the direction that we're going but is there any justification for the raid no good one uh, what is really distressing looking now at, at, at the warrant uh, and what they were searching for this was a fishing expedition it was an old-fashioned fi fishing expedition I actually think it had li little to nothing to do with with classified documents uh, what this was about was January 6th what this was about was the FBI and DOJ wanting to send in a team to say, let's grab every piece of paper we can find, and maybe we'll get something incriminating. And look, that's not a new thing for law enforcement to do. Sometimes, you know, if you're going after Al Capone, you try to go after him on income tax evasion. Um, it's not new for law enforcement to try to find a hook. And so the classified documents, the presidential records, they had a hook to say, well, he may have brought a piece of paper or maybe multiple pieces of paper that we've asked for back. And so we've got a claim to, to, to send in the troops. Is there any just So, yeah, I mean, basically, they're kind of saying what, what we've been saying, too, which is which is that it's the uh, the criminal in search of a crime. You know, they they want to re remove Donald Trump from any hope of running for reelection. They want him to be in jail. Yeah. They don't want him to be in the public sphere. And so they're going to, you know, dig and dig and dig uh, like they are not going to do, you know, for anyone else, certainly not for Hillary Clinton or, or Joe Biden or, or anyone else. Can you imagine the hair on fire on the left if they had done this to Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama? Oh, yeah. It would just be, you know, the end of the world as we know it. And then, you know, my friends on the left are saying, well, you know, those people didn't deny an election. Again, there's history and there's truth on the other side. Go back to several other January 6th. January 6th is the date that they count the electoral votes. And, and I know for a fact that when George W. Bush won both times, there were challenges from the Democrats on the electoral count. There were challenges when uh, Donald Trump won uh, in 2016. So there were challenges to the electoral uh, college vote then. So, and Stacey Abrams still says she won the governor's race down in Georgia. So, I mean, you know, denial works on both sides. It's not just Donald Trump. And this, to me, this raid is beyond the pale. And until, and, and I think it's, it's like uh, trust but verify on the Justice Department and the FBI, they're going to have to come with the goods or <laughs> the heads are going to roll there. They have yeah, to. Absolutely. And I mean, it, it's also just false that Trump is the only person to, to question an election. I mean, every modern election pretty much in my lifetime that I've been old enough to remember has been questioned by somebody. And I mean, I literally just Googled Hillary Clinton, Trump illegitimate. And she was all over him after 2016 yeah. saying that he was an illegitimate president, that he won the election because of Russia, you know, based on nothing, based on her own foreign disinformation right. with the Obama justice department coming in, making shit up about him. And so, yeah, she questioned the, the the election too. You know, she was all over him saying so let's go he send didn't really win. The jack booted thugs into her house in Chappaqua because I'm sure there's a smoking gun in there about the Russia hoax. Yeah, I'm well, sure there is. I'm sure there's more than a smoking. Oh my gun. god! I I mean, somewhere Brian Stelter Stelter. 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 His head just exploded, and it's a big <laughs> head too. By the way, speaking of the Russians, we're going to move this thing along here. Um, Putin has a problem in Russia. I don't know if you've followed this or not, uh, but the Russian population, if you think about it in terms of superpowers, U.S. versus Russia, we actually have a lot more people in the United States than he does. The current population of Russia is 145 million, and it's shrinking. Yeah. So he is bringing back something that Joseph Stalin put in place in 1944, and that is the Mother Heroin Award. Not, not heroin the drug, uh, but heroin the hero. Um, what, what he is uh, going to award these women the heroin award for is if they have 10 children or more. Now, you think back to history with Stalin. He was killing so many of his own people. Millions of Russians were dying at the hand of, of the state back then that they had to repopulate the, uh, the country. So now they've got a similar problem. I don't know if of Vladimir Putin's doing it, or maybe he's sending you know kids into the grist mill in the Ukraine, whatever the case may be. But they brought this back. So if you're a woman in Russia and you have 10 or more children, you get a nice award. What's your take on that? I'm curious. On whether they should be doing that or not? Yeah. <laughs> 
I, I, I don't know. I mean, it goes the other way on abortion, I suppose. I'm not sure where you're going with that. Well, um, I th- I, personally, I think it's fantastic. I mean, I, I think it's a great policy. I, I would say that we should institute something like that in America, but it, it would probably need a little bit more specificity. Like we should say, if you have a certain amount of kids uh, within a two parent household, you know, within a stable married marriage, you know, then we'll grant you some kind of tax credit or some kind of cash reward because we're having the same problem here. We're, we're, uh, under reproduction rate, you know, for certainly for native born Americans, you know, for people that have lived here for, for multiple generations, Mm. we're not reproducing at the same rate that, um, we're bringing in, you know, immigrants from other countries and illegal immigrants. So yeah, we need more kids. We need, and we need more stable, uh, households. So, you know, why not incentivize that? I mean, I don't well, you just got married. What are you doing about it? <laughs> We're working on it. All right. <laughs> I expect to hear an announcement sometime soon. I uh, had four kids of my own. So, you know, I've, I've, I've doubly replaced myself. That's here. true. That's true. So I, I did my part. Do I get an award? Do I get a medal of freedom or something? I mean, what are these Russian women even going to get? They're going to get like 50 rubles or something for pushing out 10 kids. Yeah. I mean, you know, by that 10th one, you sneeze and you've delivered. Yeah, I mean, 10, 10 is a lot of kids, so maybe, uh, you know, maybe not $16,000, maybe not 10 kids, maybe something a little bit less. But yeah. I do think, um, you know, one thing that you can say about Putin, he, he's, you know, he's a, a big bad guy and all that, you know, uh, that he he has kind of positioned himself as as uh, one of America's main rivals on, on the global stage. But one thing that you can definitely say about him is that he takes his country very seriously. He is pro-Russian. He is he is a Russian nationalist. You know, he is doing everything that he should be doing if you are a citizen of that country. You know, if you're pro if you're a citizen of that country, you want to do what's best for Russia, he is doing everything in that direction. Unlike what our leadership is doing, he's actually taking things seriously. So all right. Thanks again to one of our sponsors here, of course, Funhouse Pizza, Jim Dingman. He's got two locations, Blue Springs on 7 Highway, Lee Summit. He is on uh, 50 Highway. Awesome pizza, great place to hang out, and it's a great place to work, too. I mean, if you've got a kid who just graduated from high school and they're like, eh, I don't want to go to college, I'm just going to sit around the house and play video games, you kick their ass out of your house, okay? <laughs> Jim Dingman is a Marine. He'll put them to work, and uh, they'll have fun while they're working, so kids don't think that it's going to be a terrible job, uh, but but he'll put them to work. And, you know, when, when my kid got kicked out of Mizzou and thought he was going to sit on my couch and eat Cheetos and play video games, um, I put it out on Facebook. I said, I can't have this kid sitting on my couch playing video games. Somebody hire him. And somebody did. Uh, Jim Dingman is ready to help you parents with that problem. So you got a kid sitting on his ass in Blue Springs or Lee Summit or, you know, anywhere else. I mean, just get him there. Um, Funhouse Pizza, great place to hang out, great place to have pizza. We did a live event in Lee Summit. We're going to do one in Blue Springs coming up this fall. Um, go see our friend Jim Dingman. And uh, we thank him so much for being part of our podcast. Yeah. Yeah. He posted a video of an iguana saying, still looking for employees. So I don't know what the iguana has to do with that. But <laughs> Do they have an iguana at uh, Funhouse Pizza? That'd be fun. Maybe. I don't know. But then there's another thing here, too, that that I noticed on his Facebook page, which which I thought was pretty neat. Um, he did a ticket giveaway for the Chiefs right. last week. Right. And so... Um, he always has stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's sounding like he says, thank you, everyone, for playing. We will have this type of game each week for Chiefs tickets. So make sure... That you go follow him on Facebook too, Funhouse Pizza Dine-In and Delivery, Lee Summit. Um, and I know he has a separate Facebook page for the Blue Springs location too. But not only can you get a job for yourself or for your kids or relatives or friends, but you can potentially win some Chiefs tickets. And he also buys front row tickets for all the big concerts too. Yeah. And, and he gives those away. He doesn't do it for himself. He buys them and he gives them away there at Funhouse Pizza. So go check that out. Okay, back to the fun here of the podcast, the Inflation Reduction Act. I love this because – Mansion showed exactly what he is. Okay, we gave him a lot of kudos for making sure we didn't spend six trillion dollars or ten trillion dollars. But like me and my mortgage, he had a price. Yeah, and it was some pipeline in West Virginia or some damn thing like that. Uh, and then they they asked him about it after the bill signing. Right, he came out, his shoulder was all mangled up, and I remember Biden made a joke about that. Said, "Hey, he's, he's got a bum shoulder, but but we didn't do that to him. I want you to know." <laughs> Okay. It was corn pop. 
So he comes around, you know, he's there at the signing and all that. And Biden basically has been ha, ha, all over everybody. And then, <laughs> did you see this? Yeah. And then he signs and he gives Manchin the pen that he yeah. signed it with. Right. And then he puts on his mask. Yeah. Really? <laughs> and his face, too. I mean, I, I have a different clip pulled up right now. But oh, well, play the clip. Just, well, I just wanted to say, too, on, on that uh, signing thing, you know, Biden is like, Every day, I mean, he's just looking worse and worse. And, and he's like signing the bill and he's like, uh, uh, where, uh, uh. he's like looking like he has no idea where he is. And it's just, it's crazy, man. But I found a good uh, before and after clip from Newsmax because, you know, you mentioned he was talking before when he wasn't going to sign the bill that he's like, well, you know, uh, I'm not sure if this is going to stop inflation. It's spending too much. And then they got him on board. And then he was like, yeah, this is going to cut gas prices. This is going to cut prices for your average American at the grocery store. And then after he signed the bill, he had something different to say then as well. So let's check it out. This is a bill that will knock down inflation, should knock down gas prices, should knock down basically high costs across the board. It's not going to be overnight that we're out of this, okay, until the supply chains ease up. We have all the challenges we have right now, so I don't think that anytime soon, for me to put a year or two or three year, be, it'd just be guessing. <laughs> two, three years, what the hey, two, right? Three, four months. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> okay, so it's not an Inflation Reduction Act. It was all marketing, and they know it, and if you're a thinking person, you know it as well. It is a green energy bill. They tried to get everything they could, jam it in here uh, for green energy. And then, of course, Biden was on vacation when uh, Congress voted on it. So what does the green president do? He jumps on his plane with his complete entourage and flies back to Washington to sign it. Yep. What's and then, the carbon footprint on that? This was his tweet, too. I, I freaking love this tweet. I mean, what? <laughs> the Inflation Reduction Act is the biggest step forward on climate in our history. Because it's that's like, what it is. It's it's like one of those things you just want to say, say that again, but slow, mm. slower, you know? Okay, well, <laughs> let's talk about some of the things that are in the bill. First of all, 87,000 new IRS agents, but nobody under 400,000 a year is going to see their taxes go up or any audits, which is complete and utter bullshit. So they've got to get this money from somewhere, so they're going to squeeze it from the middle class. Well, what it is is they just need one IRS agent for every rich person in America, right? So yeah, that, <laughs> it's not coming to you. Personal <laughs> You've got your IRS own personal agent. IR, yeah. IRS agent with a gun that's going to come okay. to your house. <laughs> so if you can afford to do things to your house, this thing's great for you. So if you've got a lot of money, this is great for you. You want to get like solar panels on your roof, uh, you know, you want to get a new electric vehicle, but then there was this. In the bill, there is a $7,500 tax credit to offset the cost of an electric vehicle. The same day, of course, they say it has nothing to do with this. The same day, Kurt, GM and Ford raised EV prices by six to $8,500, 6000 to $8,500. And both automakers say there is no connection. So on day one, your $7,500 tax credit just went out the window. Yeah. And this is what I was referencing earlier. It's the same thing with the um, reducing or, or eliminating student loan debt or, or increasing loans, you know, for, for people going to college. They, Ford still wants to make their money. They see this as an opportunity to, to charge more. And, you know, it's why the name Inflation Reduction Act is so ironic. And it's like everything else that, that the Democrats pass. It's going to do the opposite of what they say it's going to do because you're throwing all this money you know, all this tax money added or, or not even tax money, you know, future uh, China, you know, <laughs> loan money or whatever. And uh, and it, it's just going to devalue the currency and people are going to charge more. So, yeah, the same day we have 8,500 more for Ford F-150 electric. Crazy. Uh, okay, so I'll leave you with this on the Inflation Reduction Act, a.k.a. the Green Energy Bill. Just remember, this is important when you're dealing with anyone on the left. When the weather is really hot, like it was last week on the left coast. Okay, it was 100 degrees in California, 80s and 90s in, in Oregon and Washington where it never gets that hot. When it gets really hot like that, okay, that's climate change and we're all going to die. <laughs> climate change and we're all going to die. Now, last week in Kansas City where we do Dale Carter's America, really nice. I mean, today it's a typical August day wouldn't you say i mean it's going to yeah. be like upper 80s maybe 90 degrees and it's yeah, i don't been, even think that it's going to be beautiful it's but been nice in the mornings and all that yeah so when it's nice like that it's the weather 
Right. Because that's NPR, National Public Radio. That's what they say. The high today okay? is 84. If you ever say, well, gosh, I mean, it's, it's kind of normal. Um, that's the weather. You're an idiot. That's the weather. <laughs> but if it's 100 degrees and you break a record somewhere in the summer out in California, it's climate change and we're all going to die. Yes, yes. So we're clear on that? Yeah. No, I mean, you need clear. to know that, you know, when you deal with anyone on the left. Yeah, perfectly clear. I mean, I, I like it when it's, you know, not 100 degrees. So I'm, I've been fine. I have no complaints. It's been beautiful the past week or two. It's now, been beautiful. you know, if, if you ask me for my honest opinion, and I'll give you my honest opinion, I think it is getting warmer. Okay. I think the earth is evolving because it's 5 billion years old and it will continue to evolve. And here's something shocking. People haven't been here that long. Mm -hmm. We either need to, you know, change with our planet or the planet's going to shake us off like a tick. Yeah. Yeah, there's a series of, of factors, obviously, that go into temperature and climate and things like that, of which, you know, human activity may be one. Uh, that's certainly uh, a prevailing theory that I think carries some weight, but uh, it's not the, I mean, they act like it's the only thing that's happening. I mean, just look at, I was a big astronomy nerd when I was growing up and still kind of am to a certain extent. You look at like Mars, for example, there's there's a lot of evidence that Mars used to be a lot more like the Earth, that it maybe had liquid water on its surface, maybe even life on the surface, some kind of thicker atmosphere, and now it's a desolate wasteland. So obviously human activity was not involved in, in making Mars you know, a barren desert and everything else. And I saw another story last week about a solar storm that was coming. Did you see this? I did not. There was a there was a story. Apparently, there was some increased solar activity last week, and people were worried that it might have, you know, some effect on the power grid and things like that. And I, uh, I think I maybe commented. It was probably NPR. I probably commented from the podcast page, and uh, I was like looking forward to to seeing all the NPR listeners blame solar activity on human caused climate change. Yeah, that big yellow orb out there <laughs> called the sun probably has a lot more to do with our climate on this earth yeah. than 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 we do and and really joe biden should you know feel better about that since he got on his plane to fly back from his vacation to sign the um the inflation reduction act slash green energy bill let's move on to liz um of course liz cheney is who we're talking about she lost in the primary to trump back harriet hagman by nearly 40 points. I don't know if you, you saw the stat on this, Kurt, but it was the second worst loss by an incumbent in a primary in nearly 60 years. That's I mean, crazy. she got she got her ass handed to her, right? Yeah. yeah, that's crazy in here. Oh, man, I got all the New York Times pop-ups. But, yeah, here's the map, 66.3% to 28.9%. She won two counties in the entire state. Yeah. Now, it's Wyoming, so, I mean, there's not that many counties, but still, it's a pretty – pretty severe whipping that she took. Well, and, you know, they're all, all over all these media things saying that Trump is uh, trying to kill democracy. I think this was democracy in action. Yeah. Liz Cheney made a decision. She made a decision that she was going to be the front person for the Republicans to take down Donald Trump. She did it very loudly, very vocally, and the people of Wyoming, they went to the polls and they said, we don't want you. Yeah, and that's the same thing that she's doing now that she lost. You know, she's going to try and fail upwards she she has gone on a bunch of interviews since she lost the primary you know talking about how her mission now is to combat you know the extremist election denying wing of the republican party and you know apparently now she wants to run for president which we have a clip of here the former president said last night you're now headed to political oblivion you said this fight is just beginning you've even uh, launched a political organization already so let's just be straight about it are you considering running for president yourself well what i'm going to do savannah is spend the next several months uh completing <laughs> my work in congress obviously completing my work representing the people of wyoming uh, we have a tremendous amount of work left to do on the January 6th committee. Yeah, uh, sure. And also, though, uh, I'm going to be making sure that people all around this country understand the stakes of what we're facing, understand the extent to which uh, we've now got uh, one major political party, my party, uh, which has really become uh, a cult of personality. And we've got to get this party back to a place where we're embracing the values and the principles on which it was founded. It's like, just become uh, and, a Democrat. About, just be know, honest. They don't want her. Uh, just switch, they don't, they don't parties. Want her. They don't want her. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. I, I don't, anyway, I'm sick she, of listening she, to her. Yeah, she goes on to say that she's going to 
Well, she's the new she's Lincoln. Thinking about it, I guess. She's the new Lincoln. Oh, she said that, that in too. her concession <laughs> speech. She's the new Lincoln. Where is that one at? Don't go to the theater. Uh, That's my advice, anyway. I don't have that. Okay. Well, anyway, she said she's the new Lincoln. You can find that clip pretty much anywhere. But but here's my question. You say become a Democrat. What is her constituency? The Democrats won't support her. She voted with all the Republicans on the inflation bill. Do you remember what Joe Biden said about that? These evil Republicans, all of them voted against this great piece of legislation. Yeah. It's the same thing they always do. I mean, it goes back to I mean, well before this, obviously, but the first one that I really remember was Obamacare because that was when I was, you know, in late high school, college years. And the, the narrative was, you know, Republicans want to kill old people. They don't care about starve children. Yeah. They don't care about health care. They want people to, mm -hmm. to not be able to get care and die and, and everything like that. So yeah. that's nothing. New. So what, what is her constituency? If she's going to run for president, you know, you, you kind of have to have a constituency to run. Mm -hmm. Okay. She calls out sick Republicans. I she, do have that clip. Okay. Well play the clip. What does your defeat say about Trump's hold on the Republican Party? I think, one, it says that, that people continue to believe the lie. They continue to believe what he's saying, which is very dangerous. I think it also tells you uh, that large portions of our party, including the leadership of our party, both at a state level in Wyoming, as well as on a national level with the RNC, is, is uh, very sick. And that, you know, we really have got to decide whether or not we're going to be a party based on substance and policy or whether we're going to remain, um, as so many of our party uh, are today, uh, in the grips of, of uh, a dangerous former president. Yeah. Okay. In addition to Trump's are you done? Yeah. Okay. So she called out DeSantis, who she doesn't like. Uh, she called out Josh Hawley from Missouri. Ted Cruz, and of course Trump. Her mission is to not deny him the White House in 24. So stand in the way of democracy. Don't let the people decide. She is, she's been, I guess, tapped as, as what, Joan of Arc here, uh, <laughs> that she's going to... That Joan she, of Arc times Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> only she knows what's going on here. Um, it's the new politics. And here, there, there's a new diagram. There's a, there's a new way to look at this, Kurt. It's no longer left, right. Republican, Democrat. Now it's establishment versus the rest of us. Because, uh, you know, you probably don't remember this, but when Dick Cheney was the vice president, the Democrats hated him. Dick Cheney was was Hitler in their eyes. George W. Bush was Hitler in their eyes. Uh, but not anymore. Uh, because now you've got the establishment versus the rest of us. And I would lump in a lot of people into this. You've got the Obamas, the Clintons, the Bidens, the Kerrys. Throw them in with the Cheneys, the Bushes, and Mitch McConnell. And you could probably come up with more. Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, it, it's kind of goes back to like this whole thing of, of they hate the Republican, whoever the Republican is in office. They hate them when they're in office until they leave and then they become useful. You know, like Dick Cheney is useful to, to them now because he is useful opposition against Trump. George Bush is useful to them now because he is opposing this new wing of the Republican Party. So they hate them while they're in office. They'll, they called Bush every name in the book, racist, Nazi, everything else. They hate him while he's in office. And then when he's gone, when he doesn't have power anymore, they use him to their advantage because he's speaking out against the new wing of the Republican Party that is taking power. That's well, and the, you know, the playbook. and, and um, that clip that you played from from Liz Cheney, she said something about the, our poli our party is no longer based on policy; it's based on personality. And, and what I would push back with, and I've said this many times on the podcast, I never liked the clown show with Donald Trump, but his policies. If you scraped away all of his tweets and all the other shit that comes with Donald Trump, and and drill down to the policy, his policies were. 180 degrees different from Biden and completely better. I mean, we didn't have a border situation. We didn't have an embarrassing pullout in Afghanistan. We didn't have the crime that we have now in the major cities. We didn't have inflation. We didn't have any of these things. And the stock market was humming right along. So on a policy level, Donald Trump is so much better than Joe Biden. Uh, and, and she's completely wrong. 100%.
All right, so we're done beating up on Liz? <laughs> For now. <laughs> All right, well, we'll just, yeah, keep that filed away and know that Liz Cheney is out there and she's going to run for president and she is the new Abraham Lincoln. Okay, immigration is uh, the last big topic I want to talk about here. And I said this last week, and I think we should file this away. This is important. Policy meet consequences. When you have these policies, these liberal policies, and you, you say, hey, we're a sanctuary city. This is National Public Radio, NPR. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, the consequences of that are brought to your front door. Uh, DeSantis, we just mentioned him. Okay, he's sending his illegals to Delaware. Okay, that's President Biden's home state, and he's sending busloads of illegal uh people to Delaware. Now, what's the president's response to this? Did you see the president's response? I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, he's building a wall around oh, his yeah. vacation home. <laughs> it costs $490,000. And Kurt, you and I get the check. Yeah, I, I did have the story on that. Yeah. And I, I tried to find the clip of DeSantis. I found an old clip um, that we can watch, but he's been apparently he's been talking about doing this for a while, but now I guess he's actually doing it. Businesses or contractors are dumping people who are illegal into Florida from southern Texas. You know, we're going to go after their ability to do business. Look at his Florida. hands. If he's Biden doing Trump. Dumping people, which he has we're going to move people. people. We're going to put Biden people there. The morning. They haven't done it lately, back, but they did. Back that up because he's, he's not doing um, it now. We now have money. Oh, here he goes. Florida from southern Texas. Here you go. Yeah, we're going to go go. after their ability to do business in Florida. If Biden is dumping people, which he has dumped people, they fly him in at 2 in the morning. They haven't done it lately, but they did it many months ago. Um, you know, we now have money where we can reroute them to sanctuary states like Delaware. The and only one that he doesn't do is... Uh, oh, I, just, I, I interrupted well, the, you, the applause. You got it, but, yeah. but he sent him to Delaware. What the, were you going to say? The only one that he doesn't do is the point when, when Trump's like... <laughs> when he's at the, the especially when he points to the media when he's at his rallies and he's like yeah, look at that corrupt news media back there <laughs> we hate them don't we yes we do <laughs> okay so DeSantis is sending his illegals to Delaware Texas and Arizona they have sent 7,000 people to New York and Washington and those people are coming unglued now it's 7,000 of the estimated 4.5 million who have entered illegally on Biden's watch. He's They're just sharing the pain here, Kurt, sending them to these sanctuary cities who have policies that say, we're, we're welcoming. We want you to be here. Right. Yeah. Until you're there. And, and then, you know, Muriel <laughs> Bowser's like calling the Pentagon saying, I need troops down here. I we need ne troops. We need the National Guard. There's <laughs> Mexicans in Washington, D.C. I can't handle it. <laughs> and, of course, the Pentagon. That's a clip right there. Run by the Democrats <laughs> is basically telling her we ain't sending any troops. Yeah, yeah. No, they have to deal with it now. They get, they get what they ask for. <laughs> All right. Again, write this down. This is important. Policy meet consequences. You know, when when Republicans start to build halfway houses along K Street in Washington, D.C., or, you know, in San Francisco next to where Nancy Pelosi lives, that is called policy meets consequences. OK, we, it's something that that we really should be crediting DeSantis with and Abbott. And I'm not sure who the governor of Arizona is, uh, but the governor of Arizona is doing a great job, too, because y you can't just keep taking and taking and taking without these people having some consequences out of it. Yeah, 100 percent. All right. So with all of that said. And again, we thank our friend Bob Watson, State Farm Insurance agent, um, who <laughs> who sent me a very long thing on climate change uh, that was from NASA, but I couldn't get it confirmed. But it was very true that the sun has a lot more to do with our climate uh, than than what we're doing down here. Uh, but Bob Watson, very involved in our podcast. We thank him for his support. And if you need insurance, you need State Farm. I have had State Farm, Kurt since I was old enough to drive, since I was 16 years old. And for the last 27 years, Bob Watson has been my State Farm insurance agent. His entire team is ready to go to work for you at 816-229-7878. Auto, home, life, commercial insurance, whatever your insurance needs are, he's licensed in both Missouri and Kansas, and he has a lot of clients on both sides, but he's basically based out of Blue Springs. Give Bob Watson a shot, and if, if it's not going to be Bob, it should be State Farm. And that's why I'm I'm repping the red today. I got the State Farm logo and Bob Watson's name on my shirt. And tell him that we sent you. 
Absolutely. Uh, and and there have been folks who've done that. He's, he's telling me that he's gotten new clients left and right based on them hearing them here or watching them on our podcast. So um, as we leave you today, knowing that we're going to be watching the news and we've got a lot more stuff to talk about on Dale Carter's America, um, we have our tearful goodbye to Brian Seltzer Water. Is that his name? <laughs> Seltzer? Yeah. Stelter? Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I got a couple things on this. Uh, I wanted to – I have this great – montage uh credit to daily wire on twitter but this is just fantastic and it it has that clip that you sent me in it too so we'll watch this this brand new research by gallup says american trust in the mass media is at its lowest point since 2016 and near a record low overall jeff zucker has announced his immediate resignation as the president of cnn this comes amid an investigation into what jeff zucker calls a consensual relationship what happened and where CNN goes from here. You were caught <laughs> masturbating on camera. What? You since then have been on leave from CNN. Do Can I we have talk about that? masturbating? Um, you got it all right. You Sad got to say. It all right. The biggest media story this weekend, it's the firing of Chris Cuomo from this network, CNN. Late Wednesday, a lawyer contacted CNN with a sexual misconduct complaint about Cuomo. But joining me now, the man who accused Don Lemon of sexual assault. His it's accuser claims that. Lemon started rubbing himself. But the even bigger point, I think, is about what the press is. He's is got some Trump going on there with his hands. Or by repeaters. Yeah. repeaters <laughs> I think it's the maybe just a TV shatters. thing. They're on TV and radio. You know, time maybe we have to do it now day. that we have the video. President Trump. President Trump. President Trump. 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 Money, money, money. Donald Trump has been very, very good for baseball. Very, very good. <laughs> he has been wonderful for the industry. Your boss acknowledged as much a number of number of months ago during the campaign. Les Moonves, Donald Trump, was, huh? It was Les Moonves who acknowledged Les Moonves it. Les Moonves also <laughs> acknowledged it, but so did the head of CNN. But that means that, what? That, that if ratings are up, that means what? That, that means what? Oh, the ratings are up. <laughs> it means you can't do without Donald Trump. You would be lost without Donald Amen. Trump. Amen. That CNN's, is what he said. It's so not true. It's so not true. CNN's ratings would be in the toilet without Donald How's Trump. How's my Brian Stelter? You know that's not true. It's not true. You're playing for laughs. You're, You're playing for laughs. You to know. And Hold he's on, getting them, too, because, presence. you know. What were the ratings before the Trump, and what are the ratings now? I would say uh, we might be up 20, we might be up 30%, we might be up 40%. If we go back down 40%, that's okay, too. <laughs> it's not okay. Well, Cut it off right there. Bad. It's not okay. <laughs> Brian, you're fired. <laughs> you're, you can't lose 40% of your... Actually, they've lost more than that. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. I'm Ted Koppel, and this is Nightline. Actually, I'm not Ted Koppel. I'm Dale Carter, and this is Dale Carter's America. The views expressed on Dale Carter's America are Dale's and Kurt Wheeler's. They do not necessarily reflect the views of KFKF or Steel City Media. Comments can be sent to dalecartersamerica at gmail.com. Check back for weekly episodes. Subscribe, spread the word, and give us a five-star review. Thanks for being a part of Dale Carter's America.